Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome, my name is Kishara Chisholm and welcome back to my channel, Kishara Creates. If this is your first time um, here with me, please make sure that you like and subscribe and comment. Now, today we are going to do, of course, obviously, another painting tutorial since I have my lovely canvas and easel here. Um, but this painting today might take a little bit more time than the painting that we did on Monday. Um, the one that we did on Monday took, I think, a little bit over an hour. This one might take an hour and a half, maybe more so two hours. Um, I want to do something that's still kind of spring inspired. Um, I love flowers, so you will probably see me paint flowers a lot. <laughs> but today I want to kind of do my take on a still life um, with some flowers and things of that nature. So we are going to go ahead and get started. So as usual, um, considering that I did not go ahead and sketch anything out for this painting, I'm going to go ahead and do the background first. So um, this painting that I'm going to do today is going to be kind of large, um, or the dimension is going to be kind of large, so there's not going to be a huge amount of negative space in the background. So I don't want to be extremely too picky or fussy about how much detail or anything like that that I have in the background. I just want to paint it. So I want to do um, kind of a gray tone in the background. So I'm just going to use my black and my white paint. I'm actually going to just put some streaks of black and white on the canvas and then start to blend it together. Like I said, I just kind of want a color um, gradation or variation just to have in the background because we are definitely going to paint, draw, and all of that on top of it. Um, some other tools that you might need today is I actually have a ruler and a yardstick. Um, especially when it comes to steel lives and things of that nature, you want to make sure that if you have a vase or a cup or anything like that, that it's level. You don't want things to be off center to things of that nature. So it's always good to have a, a ruler or a yardstick. Also, um, I like to use a blow dryer, especially when it comes to painting with acrylics because then I can speed up the process. Um, if I want a layer to dry first and then go ahead and paint on top of it, I can just do that real quick with the blow dryer and don't have to wait 10, 15 minutes for it to dry. So with all that talking done and out the way, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to use um, a larger brush than I usually do, but this brush holds a lot of water. So you want to make sure that you get any excess water out of this brush. And I'm actually just going to take, I'm going to take white first because I want it mostly white, obviously, because we're doing gray. And I'm just going to kind of put some on the canvas. Considering this is white paint, I'm pretty sure y'all can't see 100% where I'm putting it, but hey, it's going on there. That's all that matters. I'm going to dilute the brush with a little bit more water, kind of spread that white paint out some more. See, nothing too fancy, just white paint. Now I'm going to go in with some black and see, I didn't get a whole lot because you don't really need a lot of black. And I'm just going to do some lines here in there and I'm gonna go side to side you can either go left to right right to left however you want to and then just start to blend the colors in see how that's already turning into some lovely gray color variations gradations I'm loving that so I want to go up the entire canvas and kind of smooth everything out um, acrylic does dry very fast and considering I did not put a whole bunch of paint on the canvas this is going to dry pretty quick so you want to keep it moving if it starts to get stiff like you can't move the paint add some more water and keep it going so here we go see it's drying quickly I did not use a whole lot of paint Now I am going to put, pick up and put a little bit more paint on here. I really just wanted to make sure I had a nice blend going, but I feel like I need some more paint. So I'm just gonna go in 
with some white. I'm going to start up here at the top and kind of spread it out some more. I'm just smoothing the paint out. You just want it to be smooth. I don't want it to be any solid shade either. I like the texture of the color um, variation in there. So we are going to leave it like that. Add a little bit more paint up here. There we go. All right, so I kind of like that. But I'm going to go around the sides of my canvas too and make sure I paint the sides and the top of my canvas. Um, I will do the bottom last because I don't feel like um, turning my canvas over and all of that right now. We're not going to do all that. We're just going to paint it up. So right now, nothing fancy. I'm just painting the sides while I let the middle dry. So by the time I get done with this, it should be safe enough for me to just go ahead and start painting over top of this. You want to get your corners on both sides. Make sure you paint on both sides. I know it might be all in the camera, but hey, making sure I get my sides painted and the top. This little piece right here, I'll do that at the end too. Right now, I just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. The sides are painted. So you don't have to worry about trying to go back and do that later. All right, I'm liking that. It's a little bit darker right here than I think I wanted it, but it's okay because I'm going to paint over top of it, like I said. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. Since we're painting over it, I'm not gonna be too, you know, particular about the background. So, I'm gonna do a little cup with um, some makeup brushes in it and some sunflowers and things like that around it. So, of course, if you're gonna have a table or a base or anything like that, um, it's gonna need to be level, which is um, the reason why I have my yardstick. So, we are going to use this bad boy today. Um, this canvas is um, 16 by 20 inch canvas. So, I want to use my yardstick and because I want this painting to be rather large, I'm going to four inches and take my little pencil right where it says four inches, do a little teeny tiny line. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now, I am going to use my ruler, but instead of using my pencil to draw a line all the way across, I'm just going to use a paintbrush with a little bit of black paint. I'm using a really teeny tiny fine liner brush. I want it kind of diluted and watered down so it has more like an ink consistency. And I'm just going to make my line of demarcation. And... If you do touch the canvas a little bit with the ruler, that's okay, especially considering that we haven't put down any definition or anything. See, so just to give it a nice line of demarcation, you might want to intensify that some. There we go. That's good enough. Just to see where the line's going to go. Now, I am going to take a smaller flat brush. So flat brush because it has flat edge, straight line. So I'm going to use a smaller flat brush and just kind of where this line is, just make it stand out a little bit more. 
So I tend to make when I'm doing um, steel wives, especially as a table or something like that, I tend to make the underneath um, darker. But of course, you can kind of play around with that if you want to make it a particular style or color table or anything like that. You kind of have free range to do whatever you want to. That's what I love about art. There's no rules, rhyme, or reason behind everything. It's just technique. But you can always create your own technique too. So don't think that you have to do it this way or that way. You can paint all kinds of ways. As long as it looks good, who cares how you painted it? At least that's what I think anyway. So get a little bit more black paint. Y'all, y'all can't see, but I have like three painting palettes right here. I have paint everywhere. I can't help it, so. All right. And see, the same as the top, it does not have to be one solid shade. I actually try to stay away from that. I try not to have just one plain shade of anything. All right. So see... I did that four inches and I love to use a guide over ruler. So that's four inches, okay? Which gives me a remainder 16 inches or whatever. I wanna leave maybe another four inches at the top. So I'm just like I did earlier, I'm going to do a little line right there, just a little one. And I'm actually not going to do a line of demarcation for this. I'm not going to paint all the way through. I just know when I start to do um, my details and everything that I do not want my image to go over that area. I want that to be the top. So same thing here at the top. All right, now let's see. So, and this is 16. So, I don't know, for some reason I'm like in fours today. So I think I'm going to do four inches here too. See that right there? And like I said, this is going to be a fairly large painting today, but this area right here where I just did right there, this amount of space, that's gonna be where the cup where the brushes are going to be. The rest of it, the flowers around it are going to be on the other side. Actually, I think I might wanna make it just a little bit smaller. That might be a little bit too large. Yeah, I do. I like that better. So, I'm just going to take a little bit of that gray and kind of cover up that one line that I don't want to use. And like I said, you don't have to be too picky or fussy about the background because the majority of this is going to get covered up. So, Told you you're going to need a ruler today because you want your proportions to look nice. So, so I did another four inches from here because I want the cup to be from here to here, that height.
Yeah, I used to absolutely hate doing grids and all of that in art school, but hey, it was good for me, obviously. Because it taught me the importance of making sure things are proportionate. So, I am going to use the ruler for here just to get it out the way. And like I said, you can barely see the lines. You don't have to do all of this, but I'm slightly OCD, so I like to know that everything is going to be the right proportions. All right. So, now that I got that out the way, I am going to start laying out um, the silhouette and everything for my cups with my paint brushes and all of that fun stuff and now that I look at it and look at the composition I want to go in two inches shorter here but instead of me um instead of me using my ruler and stuff again I'm just going to kind of eyeball it all right so I'm gonna take my little fine liner brush. I think that I'm gonna do my cup blue. So right now I'm just outlining everything cause I'm basically going to draw out the still life first um, with the paint and then go into it and add all the details and all of that. So the actual hardest part of this today is actually going to be drawing it out. So I'm just going to kind of use a bright blue, that way it will stand out and um, I can be able to go ahead and sketch everything out onto the canvas. Um, of course, any little lines or whatever that you have on the background, considering that it's not a really detailed background, um, you can always paint back over that, which is the reason why I didn't mind going ahead and doing my grid lines and all that on top of it. Otherwise, if it was going to be a more complex painting or a more detailed background, I most likely would have sketched out the image first and then painted around it. That way, I wouldn't have to go back and touch up areas of the background. So, the areas where I started um, my line for my little cup that's going to hold my makeup brushes, I'm just gonna go ahead and outline that. And this blue will probably change. I just wanted to make sure that it stood out enough cause like the flowers, I'm going to sketch those out in a color that's pertaining to the flowers. So I'm actually glad that I did do this because when it comes to a cup, a cup, the top of it is rounded. It's never going to be a straight line, ever. So, you kind of want to dip into it like that and make like a scoop. <laughs> Try to make it even, but if you don't, you can always go back and touch up your line. Don't worry about if your line is perfect. All of this is going to be covered up. So, and since this is resting on the table, you don't want it to just stop and be floating at the top of the table. So I'm going to bring it down some. Try to, I'm eyeballing it. So I'm trying to just make sure it's pretty much even. And the same thing with the bottom. You don't want the top or the bottom to be a straight edge because when you look at a cup or whatever on the table, it's rounded, it's not straight. And like I said, I'm really not doing much painting right now. I'm just laying out my image. So see right there, now it's actually on the table and not just sitting floating in the air with a, a darker shade underneath it. And sometimes I have to step back and take a look at it 
All right, I'm liking that. So, the reason why you want this to be round is because you're going to draw the inside of your cup too. Cup, holder, whatever you want to call it. So, not only am I an artist, but I'm also an esthetician and a skincare specialist and I did makeup for years. So today I just start looking around my room and I'm like, oh, what can I draw? And I was like, oh, there's makeup brushes right there. Why not just use that and draw some flowers on the side of it? So that's what we're doing today. All right. So I like to kind of do a C shape kind of play around with it and then close it off. Now, since we are just sketching, if you ever feel like you made it too big or too small, you can go back over top of it. That's one thing I love about painting is that it is very forgiving, especially acrylic paint. It dries really, really fast. So you really don't have to worry too much about if you make any mistakes or anything like that. So as you can see, voila, this is gonna be my cup. It's straight flat in the middle of the picture, which is what I wanted. Because most of this space right here on the sides is gonna be covered up and the makeup brushes are going to kind of come off of these angles or whatever, which is why I wanted to kind of leave my mark right here where I wanted um, my brushes and everything to stop so that I have a good amount of space at the top. Um, especially since the composition here is pretty much going to take up all the sides. I'm going to make sure to leave just a little bit underneath here so you can tell that it's on a table. But like I said, this is going to be a pretty large piece. So I'm going to go in with a very light pink. And one thing about these colors, you don't have to be too particular. Like you don't have to use pink and say, oh, my paint brushes have to be pink, whatever. I'm just using different colors to set out my shapes. That way, um, it'd be easier for me after I sketch everything out to know which areas are what and all of that fun stuff. So people always look at drawing and they think about it as being complex and complicated and it's not. It's about technique. So let's say for these paint brushes, for instance, um, I want them to basically come off out of the corner of the cup. So you see, I'm just going to draw a line right there. And you know how paint brushes come in different shapes and all of that. So, I'm going to do another line and I'm going to fan this line out, make this a little bit wider. So see, that's going to be my silhouette for my larger brushes. And I've got to do some smaller brushes or some eyeshadow brushes on this end too. So I'm going to make another one of those over on this side. And I'm going to take this all the way to the edge as well. And round this one out also. Now, of course, all your um, makeup brushes and everything are not going to be the same exact um, height. But when I sketch it out, I sketch it to the highest um, height first, and then I'm going to go back in and sketch everything. So, so I want this to be probably four different brushes and maybe three brushes over on this side. So I'm going to start with the first brush and I'm kind of just going to lay out where 
So I'm gonna do the bristles first. I want the bristles to kind of you know what? One thing about acrylic paint that I like is especially if you're you know have an issue with the lines, you don't like to see any lines, as long as the paint is wet, you can take a clean brush and remove some of those colors or if those lines bother you or whatever. So I, I think I'm gonna do And I'm kind of just playing around with silhouette right now. I'm not being super picky or anything. I'm just kind of playing around with how I want it to look. Right now, I'm just playing around with some shapes. All right, so I'm gonna clean up the line some just to make it easier for you to see. Y'all, I know that ceiling fan is extremely loud in the background. I can't help that. It is what it is. All right. Now I'm just making a little bit of gray and I'm going to cover up those areas where Those extra lines that I don't need, I'm going to cover those up. And see, you've got some makeup brushes, at least on that side anyway. And like I said, it's okay if we cover up a little bit of the background because we are going all of this right here is going to get covered up and we're most likely going to have to touch up the background anyway so that is absolutely fine all right so we are going to do some paint brushes on 
excuse me, some makeup brushes, makeup brushes, paint brushes, whatever you want them to be on this side as well. And see, I'm trying to leave a little space in here to make them look like they're overlapping. I don't want them to look like they're all the same. I'm going to make this one um, longer. And I'm trying to make all the points or the top of the makeup brushes different heights. And I want this one to look like it's coming out of it. And this is going to be the shortest one. All right, so just like I did on the other side, I'm gonna use that gray to kind of cover up those extra lines. All right, and we now have some makeup brushes in a cup. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to um, sketch out where I want my sunflowers to start so i'm thinking about doing a sunflower here behind one here in front and maybe some off to the sides behind the one i have in the front so i'm going to take i'm going to use a really pale um or pastel yellow to achieve that so i'm just gonna mix up a really light yellow Mind you, like I said, all of these are going to get covered up. All of these colors, this is just to sketch out the image. So right now we're just sketching out the image. So don't worry too much about making any colors perfect or anything like that. Because these brushes are going to change. They're not going to be pink. This is going to be blue, but it's definitely not going to be that shade of blue. And the sunflowers, of course, are going to be yellow, but nowhere near this light shade that I'm going to use. All right, so I want my flower to kind of rest on the base of the table. So I'm going to start it kind of close to the edge of the cup. And then I'm going to make my lovely little sunflower. And so this one is going behind the cup. So I want to be mindful that I don't put any petals in front of the cup on this side. All right, just to lay out the silhouette. And I'm gonna use another small liner brush and use some green. That way I don't have to just keep cleaning my brush and everything out. So I'm just gonna make a light green so where I wanna sketch out where the leaves are. And right now, like I said, you're just kind of playing around and having fun. Don't worry too much about it because all of this is gonna get changed anyway. So I'm going to lay out where I want some of my leaves to go and kind of like there's a little bit of space right here. And 
and I don't want that just floating in there by itself so I'm going to add a little fran right there beside them and I think I'm going to do one down here too. Now I'm going to make these larger which is why I said right now is really you're just sketching but instead of sketching with um, paper and a pencil you're sketching with your paintbrush onto the canvas which is actually a lot easier than drawing with paper and pencil All right, okay, I like that. Then I'm going to do my flower on this side, but this one I actually want to come in front of the cup. And I want it to be a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to sketch out a sunflower, nothing too fancy. And don't worry too much if you make a mistake. Like I said, you can let it dry and you can paint over top of it. All right, and I'm kind of just looking. I need to step back my own self because I haven't. Okay. All right, all right. I promise sketching everything out is the hard part. The fun part will be going back and filling everything in. So since we have all this space over here on this side, I want to do some flower buds coming from out of here. Well, first, let me do some leaves on this guy first. I'm just touching up the shape of these leaves over here too. All right, so I got some leaves. So I kind of want to do a stem right here coming out from behind the cup. And I'm going to do a U shape, but be careful that I make sure that it is behind this flower petal. And then I'm going to round it off at the top. And this I'm actually just going to go ahead and fill in. Then 
right here. You know what? Let me make. I'm gonna do another petal right here. I'm gonna make that one a little bit larger. All right. And I'm going to do one coming out from right here too. But this one's gonna have a little different shape. So I'm going to draw an oval kind of connected to that. And we're just gonna leave that like that. I'm gonna add way more definition and things to it. But right now, like I said, we're just kind of sketching out how the flowers are going to go. Now, we're almost done sketching everything out, I promise. So I'm going to take that yellow again and just add to these little flower buds right here. So I'm going to do some little loops, it looks like. Almost like little bunny ears. And I just want this paint to be nice and thin, almost like an ink consistency. I'm sure you've heard me say that probably 50 times so far today, but that's just how it goes. So little bunny ears right here. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to keep adding and layering to this. But we just want to get a basic silhouette. So little loops, little kind of bunny ears. And I actually... I'm going to do the same thing down here with this little guy and see how it's kind of coming off the edge of the canvas. That is exactly what I wanted. All right. And with that being said, I might add some more leaves too. So there's a little bit of space right here and I don't think I want to do another flower bud or some more or another flower. So, there we go. All right, now we're going to get to start to have some fun. Right now, I'm still kind of just working on the silhouette, but you'll be surprised now how fast it starts to come together. So, all right. So first and foremost, and like I said, we can worry about any little areas in the background at the very, very, very end. You always wanna put a base coat down because then you don't have to do as many layers of your paint um, when you start your painting. So main reason to put your background down is because of that. So since we started with the cup in the middle, I'm going to take my round brush it's a pretty large round brush too and i'm going to mix up a pale blue so i'm gonna i'm still going to use some of that turquoise that i use but i'm going to deepen it by adding some brilliant blue into it and lighten it with a good amount of white And right now it's just a base color too. So don't be too particular about this color either. You can always change it, add more to it. We're just putting down a light color so we can go over top of it. And see, if we didn't have a base coat down, it would take a lot longer to just go ahead and fill in this color.
make sure you get the lines for when you first drew out the cup too. And you want your strokes to be uniform, so you want them to be smooth. So as you can see, I'm taking my brush and I'm sketching around everything just to make sure my lines are nice and smooth and crisp, crisp around my image that we sketched out. Then I'm going to go back and make sure that the paint is smooth and all the strokes are going the same way. Make sure you cover up your sketch lines too from when you sketched it out with that darker shade. Add some more water to my brush. If the brush starts getting hard to slide onto the canvas, then you need to add more water to your brush. All right, I think that's good enough for a base coat for that. So I'm going to leave that alone. Um, I'm not going to paint inside the cup yet. Of course, that's most likely going to be a really dark gray or most likely black. But I am going to go ahead and get started with the makeup brushes. Um, I'm not going to start on the flowers down here yet because this blue is still wet. And especially since these are sunflowers, they're yellow, it's gonna turn green if I start to try to paint too much into the flowers. So let's get started with these paint brushes. So um, the tops of the paint brushes right here, hmm. Typically they're silver, but considering that the background is gray, you know what, I'll just do a darker gray and we'll keep it like that. So I'm going to do a pretty dark gray. So like I said, these colors were going to change anyway, but I'm going to kind of lay in my colors. And I want that a lot darker than that. All right, all right. And do the same thing on this side with the other brushes. Now, 
I am going to use, actually I'm going to use a flat edge brush. Why can't I ever find my brush? There we go. This is a flat brush, but it's a lot smaller than the one, the one we used earlier today. So I'm actually going to just take some black on my brush. And right here, because this one is kind of underneath on the sides, I'm gonna make it dark right there. The same thing here, where they overlap, you want to see shadows. So see, I'm taking my flat brush, I'm just putting a little bit of black onto it like this, to where you just have a little teeny tiny bit, and I'm touching just the corners. And kind of blending it out even though this one isn't overlapping I'm still going to do that same thing on this side and then you see how I push it out to blend it out all right let's do some over here too All right, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Now these brushes are angling a different way, so I'm going to do the shadow on the other side. But I'm doing the exact same technique. I'm just putting a little teeny tiny bit of black on the edge or the very tip of the flat part of the brush, and I'm kind of just sliding it into the canvas and pushing it out all right all right now i do think i'm going to do these maybe uh light pink color just because i think it will look good with the yellows and the blues and all of that good stuff and if i'm going to do very girly painting with uh makeup brushes and flowers why not why not make the makeup brushes pink why not so let's do So I'm just filling it in with a light pink, just like I did with the gray um, for the top part of the brushes. Not being too particular, I'm just filling in the lines right now. Now, instead of going in here, with our darker um, pink, I'm actually gonna use red, but I'm gonna use that same flat brush and use that same exact technique. So I'm gonna use some brilliant red. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with that pink, not too much, because. And
then I'm going to add some more of that pink into there to kind of blend those some. If you get your strokes a little bit down here on the rim of your cup, don't worry too much about it. You can always go and touch up at the end. Right now, I'm just kind of smoothing it out. Of course, I'm going to go back with some more shades and deepen that up in between here. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to use a little teeny tiny liner brush, and I'm actually going to use some black. I'm doing a line right at the base of where the metal part meets the handle of the paint brushes. And I'm gonna add some very fine lines just to show where the paint brushes start, stop, and overlap. If you have any little teeny tiny space on the sides right here, make sure you fill that in black to give the appearance or the look that the brushes are sitting inside of the cup. All right, I'm gonna dilute this a little bit, thin out this black paint some more. All right. So I'm going to do some here too, just so we're not a whole lot, not making it really dramatic. I just want you to be able to see where um, the shadows are, where they're overlapping. And see, I'm very finely going and just kind of smudging over those lines that I just made, just to give it some definition and some shadow. So I'm kind of just blending out what I'm using, what I've already put down. If you do need to add a little teeny tiny bit, do it gradually. You can always add more paint. It's easy to make it darker. It's a lot harder to go back and lighting it up. There we go. Do the same thing over here. Add some more water because I want it a little bit thinner. All right, same thing on this side. Make sure your paint isn't too thin and it's not too watery and running down the canvas. That's not what you want. If you feel like you put a little bit too much gray or black in one area, go back with your pink and kind of touch it up. 
Now I like to just go and make sure that there's not any spots that need a little bit more attention to or a little bit more color. If you can see the background color poking through this area, then you need to add more paint. That means it's too thin. You don't want there to be any white spots. I'm just going back in with the pink and touching up any areas I feel like I need to touch up. Okay. I like that. I actually think here I'm going to make it a little bit darker in those areas. Because I started out, I started doing it really light because I didn't want it to be too dark in any area. So I'm going to lighten that up. Alright, then I'm just going to touch up with a little bit of pink in there. And I'm going to leave that alone. Around the metal part of the brushes, I am going to do some bolder outlines in the black. And I'm not outlining the whole thing. I'm just giving it the shape some more definition. Oh yeah, I'm already liking that better. So you wanna cover up your guidelines that you did when you were sketching everything out. You don't want it to look like you're just coloring it in. So make sure you kind of blend it out too to make it look more like a shadow. step back from it for a minute okay Sorry, I know I got real quiet. I'm just trying to get my highlights on, excuse me, my shadows on for this. So I can start with the tops of the brushes and then go on to the next thing. All right, all right. 
y'all painting takes patience painting is all about layers it's about the process all right i'm gonna add some more little shadows up in here with these brushes too Right now, I'm just playing with what kind of what I feel like looks right. I'm gonna step back. All right, I like that. I'm gonna leave those alone. Maybe touch up that one little spot. All right, now I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then go back over top and do the bristles because I want those kind of light. So I'm going to start on the flowers. So I'm going to start with, I'm actually gonna build my color with a little bit of brown first. So I'm gonna mix some dark umber with a regular base brown and a little bit of yellow. I just want a darker brown, not necessarily too dark. And I'm going to cover up the middle of my sunflower with that brown shade. Mind you, it does not have to be perfect. Don't be too picky. We're just putting down brown. That's all. We're just putting brown down. If it gets like this, add a little bit more water if you want it to be a little bit deeper. But right now, we're going to blend and build more color. So we're not going to worry too much about that. But we're not going to paint the flowers just plain, solid yellow. We're going to add some color variation in it. So you want to start with dark to light. Um, I feel like the only time that rule does not apply is with black, unless you are pretty kind of particular about in how you do it. So with the brown, I'm going to kind of just add some touches here and there, just like we did with the paint brushes um, to touch up. The areas where the flowers would kind of naturally overlap to give some shadow or some depth to it depth excuse me to it And you see, I'm not covering up the whole flower or anything like that. With the brown, I'm just putting down little pieces of some brown just to build up that color variation. Give it some depth, depth some dimension, all that good stuff. So there's a little teeny tiny touch of brown and all of those little petals. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And you see, I'm just putting down color. I'm not being particular because we are going to go over top of all of that. Now, I'm still going to use this small flat brush, but up in here where we did all those little bunny rabbit shapes or bunny ear shapes, we're going to do that too with some of the brown also. This is just going to give some definition or dimension, more color variation, all that fun stuff. Make sure you give this flower down here some love too. 
I'm gonna make this one a little bit larger. There we go, that covers up some more of that space. I'm gonna make this one larger too. I want this flower to be larger. All right, so I'm just going to take some of the bright yellow and kind of just go over the flower petals. It's okay if you paint the whole thing yellow, sunflowers are yellow anyway. We're gonna add more color definition to it. So just go ahead and paint over top of it. You'll see how some of that brown starts to show through the petals. And just like we did with the paint brushes, we're going to go back and add more definition right now. We're laying out color. We'll do all the fine tuning at the end. This is when it gets to the fun part. We'll be done before you know it. Literally, it took, it took longer to draw it out than it's going to take to do the whole entire picture, the whole rest of the picture. All right, we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're just covering it with the yellow, nothing fancy. See how that brown is starting to pick up through there, even some of that lighter yellow that we originally sketched with. It's the beauty of adding layers on top of it. All of those colors start to come through. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm not going to do the little kind of bunny ear or loop shape. I'm just kind of spreading the paint out, fanning it out, kind of. Same thing over here. All right, now I want this to dry some. So instead of adding more color to the yellow, I'm gonna let that dry some and um, I'm going to do some more to the brushes. Then I think I'm gonna play around with the green um, for the stems and the leaves, then I'll do some highlights to the cup and then finish up the flowers and touch up anything I want to touch up in the background. And that's basically it. And that's not going to take as long as you think it will. All right, so let's do the bristles for the brush. So I want the brush, the bristles to be kind of light. So that same brown that we used um, for the flowers, I'm going to dilute that, make it a lot thinner and a little bit lighter. And where I'm going to, where the paint brushes kind of overlap, I'm going to add some of that brown to it. 
and see I added the paint first and then I'm pushing it over to the side I kind of draw the line up then I push it over to the side does not need to be perfect because we are going to paint over this same thing paint the sides and then push into it paint the sides nothing's changed push into it sides if it starts to get too thick water down especially with these smaller ones you don't want that brown too thick or too heavy I'll go a little bit darker on this side since these are larger brushes Okay, add some little touches over here too. Yeah, I originally said I was going to do the bristles of the brushes white, but I think I want to keep it more in the brown tones. And I won't have to do as many coats to cover up this pink because it was kind of vivid or... All right. So y'all probably tired of yellow, but I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow into there. And then I'm gonna go over it with a mixture of a lighter brown. So this is just going to brighten the bristles up. And see, I didn't clean the brush off or anything like that. I want the color to blend. Try to cover up all of that pink. Okay. more yellow make sure all the pink is covered up all right I'm gonna dilute that brush and with the yellow still in it I'm going to use like a sepia brown and make a lighter brown might add a little bit of white to it make it more of a tan there we go and i'm gonna kind of see how i'm kind of wiggling my brush back and forth that way the colors are still peeking through okay
All right, I'm liking that. I'm gonna do some more brown right here and then I'm gonna leave it alone. Some more of that darker brown that I used originally. This, the same technique up the sides and then over. Up the sides, over. Up the sides, over. Right, same thing on this side. I'm going to leave that alone. We'll add some more fine tuning and details to all of that later. So I'm going to go in with the green, I think. You know what? Let me just go ahead and do the black right there because that's going to bother me. I'm just going to fill in this little spot right here where the inside of the cup is. Sorry, y'all had to step back from it for a minute. Okay. So let's add some love to this cup down here. Well, you know what? While I still got, while I'm still using the black, I'll go down in here and add some shadows. And it doesn't need to be perfect. You just want it to have some contrast. Okay. Now, let's add some love to this cup. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the color, but I'm not going to mess with it. We're going to play around with some highlights and shadows, and I think that will help out some. And I'm kind of just playing around with it. This isn't a super realistic piece. It's kind of whimsical, so just have some fun with it. Just do what kind of feels right what looks good to you so i'm just kind of brighten it up in the middle because i feel like i made it a little bit darker than i wanted so i'm kind of just playing around and lighting it up I'm just adding some white and then i'm going to dilute it some there we go see how that already changed that tone of that blue without having to do too much to it, but still gave a good amount of color saturation. See how I'm kind of wiggling the brush when it starts to 
get dry right there because like I said acrylic dries really fast so you have to keep it moving especially if you're not putting a lot of paint on your brush keep that brush moving let me step back for a second oh yeah I like that but you want your cup to be smooth so try to get your highlights and everything going in one direction. And I am intentionally going and touching up this line right here where the cup meets. And on this side, I'm gonna play around with some darker blue mixed in to that shade that I already made. Actually, I'm gonna mix some red into it and make that a really deep blue. Kind of like I did with the painting that I did with you guys on Monday. Let's make more of a kind of a navy blue. There we go. Dilute it just a little bit because that color is very rich. See how I'm just going up and down to the sides. Kind of keep that brush moving just like we did when we used that white. Then I'm going to just dilute the brush just with some water and go back into it and Spread it out, kind of mix it into the lighter tone that we used. And see, I'm trying to make sure that my strokes are all gone in one direction. I'm going to add some more dark right here. And then blend it out. All right, let me step back from it for a minute. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna go in and very lightly add some more white right there. Some very diluted white, just to kind of blend it together. And then we're gonna do some of the green and we'll do the yellow over top of the green cause it takes yellow to make green anyway. So you don't really need to worry about that too much. So go in with some thin white. And I don't want too much, so I'm going to kind of go in and tap where I want it to be. And I want this picture to have texture to it, so I'm not really making anything too smooth. All right, let me see. Ooh, yeah, I like that. All right. Let's give this green some love. So, I usually don't use a flat brush that much, but I'm trying to get out of the habit of using the round brush so much because I just like that brush a lot. So, these little bulbs right here, whatever you want to call them, they have shape. 
and texture to them. So I'm going to use the flat brush to kind of aid in that shape to give that definition. And I'm going to add some brown to where that stem, where those stems would be too. I'm going to fill in some of this right here with some brown areas too. Mind you, this painting is not going to be extremely realistic. It would have took us way longer if we were going to do it to that extent. But... The same with here. Let's do a little line and we'll do some of those coming up out of here too. Let's add some more water because that brush is getting kind of stiff. All right, some right here too, and we'll put some brown into where the leaves are going to be too. And I'm not putting it in any particular place or anything like that, just kind of making sure there is a touch of the brown in this leaf and in that leaf and so on and so on. Deepen this up too. Or not we're getting down to the finish line add some water kind of spread that paint around there we go so I had a good amount right there So, all right, so with that really dark brown, I'm going to mix up a dark green as well. I'm going to kind of brighten it though with some yellow, but still want it kind of dark. And see, I'm really going to do this just by adding texture to the painting. Like we said, it's going to be kind of whimsical. It's not going to be too realistic. So let's just have fun with it. Now, with the leaves, I am going to go ahead and just paint them all the way green with this shade of green. Give all the leaves some love. 
just go ahead and cover them up with that green all those browns and other colors that are underneath it will show through let me step back for a second okay same thing with these leaves over here let's go ahead and paint them with the green and we'll go ahead and fill them in to add a little brown right there because I didn't add enough and the leaves are kind of blending together. Let me see. Okay. some brown right here too all right I'm ready to have some fun so I'm gonna go back with my brown or excuse me with my round brush and I'm gonna go in with just some white and Add some strokes here and there into the petals of my flower. Like I said, this is when the fun really starts to begin because we're not going to be too picky or precise. We're just going to start playing around with some colors and having fun. So see, I'm kind of giving each little petal a little bit of white. Same thing on this side. And mind you, I'm not making it uniform all the way around each petal. I'm kind of just adding some here, there. I'm going to do the same things with these, but I'm going to do kind of little strokes like that, where it almost looks like a dandelion. Almost. Same thing down here. Especially down here, because I want that to be quite a bit lighter. I'm going to make an orange, a kind of pale orange. I'm going to put some white in it so it's more of a pastel. And with a little bit more red. See, I'm just kind of throwing the color down. Make sure you get up close to the middle of the flower too. You don't want there to just be a huge circle in the middle. So kind of touch and pull the paint into the center of the flower. And if you see what I'm doing with the orange, I'm kind of touching up the lines, making sure they're real smooth. Make sure. Then I'm going to kind of just fill in some of the middle with that orange too. All right. 
a little bit more water to the brush. Up in here, I am going to do those same little kind of bunny ear loops that I did at the beginning. Feel like I needed to darken that up some. There we go. All right, so like I said, kind of push into the center of the flower. All right. And step back, add some more brown to it. See, now I'm just going to start adding color here and there, everywhere. I'm just adding a little brown here and there. Up in here, you don't want to add too much. So I'm going to do a little quick kind of strokes. Step back. Well, yay, I'm liking this. So, of course, in here, we're going to add a good amount of yellow. And we're going to still stick with those same kind of strokes. Here and there. All right, so I'm going to go back and mess with the green some more. I'm going to use a liner brush, not my smallest one, but a liner brush. Go back in with some of that dark brown here and there. Kind of hint to that, those little peaks on the bulbs of the sunflowers. Add in some brown to the leaves. Do the same thing over here. All right. I'm 
going to add more of a pastel green there. More of a pastel green, but still kind of bright. It's going to have a good amount of yellow into it. There we go. That lightened it up a good amount. And I'm going to go back over top of that with some yellow. Make sure that brush is nice and clean because I had a good amount of white in that brush. So I don't want to make the colors that I put over top of that opaque. Just adding greens here and there, playing around with it. And in the leaves, I think I'm going to add some yellow to them too. And then I think I'm going to leave those alone. I'm going to add more brown in here. I lightened it up more than I wanted to. There we go. And what I want to use in the brown. Add some more water, kind of dilute that a little bit more, thin that out some more. All right, so while I have the brown already on my brush, I'm going to kind of go around in that circle in the middle of the flower and kind of press into it and just do little dots like this just to give some texture to the painting. And you kind of want to go outside of the line. You don't want it to be an absolute perfect circle. And I'm kind of just blending it out around it. You want the edges to be soft. You don't want it to look like it's just brown in the middle and it just, boom, stop. <laughs> so we're going to do the same thing over here. Dang it. I was wondering when I was going <laughs> to drop my paintbrush. All right. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. Kind of dab around the middle. Play around with it. Now, before you try to spread it out in the on the corners, you want to make sure you don't have too much moisture or paint on your brush. So kind of draw dry your paintbrush out first and then go in with that technique. Feel like it's still just too much of a indication of a circle right here. So I'm gonna go back and tap here and there and do that same. I add a little teeny tiny bit of water on my brush and then do that. All right. There we go. Let me see. I'm going to add some reds into there just to give some color variation. I'm just tapping it into it. We just want to layer on the colors. So some reds. Yep, and before you even guessed it, some more yellow. Kind of 
more so in the center right there all right i'm going to take just some plain black and i'm kind of going to do a semicircle but with those same kind of textured dots and even this one where you can see the whole circle of the inside of the sunflower i'm not going to just fill in a whole circle with the black i'm kind of going to do half of a circle at the top and half of a circle at the bottom to make it kind of stand out and i think i'm gonna start doing my highlights with some white and then touching up the background and we're basically done all right so i'm just gonna use i'm gonna use my liner my um excuse me my small little flat brush again oh no i might have to use this brush a little bit more often i've been using it a good amount today let's thin that white out some and this is just for highlights there's no really rhyme or reason to how i'm doing them i'm just kind of having some fun i like that one so i'm not going to add anything else to that one add some to the leaves Add a little touch of yellow to the leaves and then brighten those up some especially after i just put that white down on them just a little teeny tiny bit And that let me step back all right i'm leaving it alone i'm gonna do the background over again and then that's it i'm not doing anything else i'm gonna leave it alone after that nope i take that back i'm gonna add some more highlights up here too into the paint brush the paint brushes into that with just a little teeny tiny bit of black on the sides and blend into that
gonna step back from it. right here step back again okay I'm liking that I am still going to take my liner brush with a little teeny tiny bit of white Okay, add some here. All right, all right, I'm really done now. I'm going to add just some little strokes in here to make it look like a brush. I'm going to do the bristles with a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And I'm not really making them too you know particular or anything like that i just want you to be able to see that they are bristles and that they do have some texture to them don't go overboard because you do not want to cover up all of that lovely work you did earlier with making brushes And see, a little bit of white goes a long way. You don't need a whole lot of it. You step back some. All right, and of course, I'm gonna use my round brush. Why can I never find the brush that I want? Jeez, go in. With a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown. And kind of blend into that to where you can see the brush marks. But it still keeps that tone. All right. All right, let's fix this background and then I'm done. So I need some white paint. I always run out of white paint. I don't know what it is, but I always use all the white paint. Come on paint. I got paint everywhere. I just don't want to look for it. There we go. And I'm just going to put Dang it, where's my brush? There it is. Clean it out really well. 
I'm just going to put a little bit of black onto the brush, mix that paint up. Sorry, <laughs> I might not should have threw the paint brushes down. I mean the paint like that, but hey, sorry. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did earlier. I'm gonna paint around everything. Lighten that up some. This is the absolute perfect time to touch up any lines or anything like that that you need to. Oh no. That is what you don't want to happen. That means I had way too much paint on that brush, but it's all good. I'm just gonna take it off like that. Perfect. And be particular when you go around your brushes to make sure that you touch up everything and the edges look nice and smooth. Any remnants of the outline that you traced, you want that to be covered up with the background color. And see, this is exactly why I was like, don't be too picky about the background. It's called the background for a reason. So I like to paint all the way around first and then go back and fill in the rest of the area for the painting. are basically the final details of the painting. So just making sure the background looks good and then we are done. And remember we already painted our sides. Don't forget to go back and paint underneath and paint the top as well. touch up a little bit down here too just because it might be a little bit darker in these areas the background might be anyway all right now that we have all of that we're just going to do the same thing that we did before blend the background out I like to start in the middle and kind of work it out. Be mindful that you don't just paint over everything, all the work that you just did. And you want your lines to be smooth. So you might have to change your angles in the way in which you're holding the brush. If you're having a hard time getting into an area with a certain brush, if it's too large, then use a smaller brush. A lot of times people think that they need to use the same brush, but you don't. That's the reason why there's so many different shapes and sizes of brushes. And see, I'm literally doing the same thing I did earlier. Just spreading out the color. 
just making sure that it looks good. Add some more up here. See, I'll add more white to that. Add some more water to the brush. Spread, spread, spread. take a step back for a minute and look at it and let's see how I did oh wow I really like it all right there's one or two more things that I want to add and then I'm done for real then I'm really done let me see All right, I'm gonna blend that out and then I'm done. Pressing hard into the canvas to move that paint. I'm just trying to thin it out. I want it to go a little bit more towards the edge. I'm just blending out the sides. All right, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm over. I'm not painting anymore. I hope you guys liked it. And I hope you guys enjoyed painting with me today. Um, if you did, make sure you come back Wednesday. I will be doing another piece. Um, I'll probably do a shorter piece that day. I probably won't do something that will take the same amount of time. However, if you enjoyed being here with me today, then please definitely subscribe to my channel. Make sure you like, share, comment, turn on your bell notifications so you can be notified every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday whenever I upload a new painting tutorial for you to paint along with me. It was my pleasure. I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!